Alex had some rough things this week, but we're gonna talk about that later on in the video. You don't ever have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars. You're perfect, darling, just the way you are. So before you think to rip yourself apart, open up my heart and you'll find love. family so normally I start filming in the morning so we kind of film throughout the day today I've had a headache all day which I guess the doctor said is normal after you give birth you can get headaches more easily like right after so I don't know if that's the cause or what's going on but I'm feeling a little better so the kids and I are gonna make dinner together and and then have like a movie night or do something fun together so we're gonna start well Max is gonna cut up can all I the see? watermelon. Can I show my lip? Like, oh yeah. So my lip is actually doing better now. It's healing. It stops swelling. Uh, you guys are probably gonna think it's disgusting. No, it's but... okay. We saw it. Oh, it's so much better. I the know. stitches are almost dissolved. I know, which is nice. How are you feeling? Have you I'm had any more headaches or anything? No, like my concussion is actually starting to go away. But like when I, when I feel it, like when I feel my hand like actually on the concussion, it'll hurt. But like usually. Like the day I got hurt, the next day I was running and stuff, it would hurt. But like now- Why were you running the day after, Jake? I, I was just running. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> no fighting. <laughs> I was just running. You're not supposed to run, you're supposed to take it easy. But I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. Hey, oh why are we fighting? Yes, I want all the watermelon cut up. All three. Um, I think. Oh yeah. I don't know if that one's still good. That one looks a little. See how good my watermelon skills. All right, so these ones went bad. They're kind of gross. They're soggy. So we're just gonna bring them out to the chickens because the chickens like this kind of stuff. So. Let's go do it. Hi, chickens! <laughs> quack, 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 quack! <laughs> All, right. All right, you ready? Love the watermelon. They're eating it like crazy. This was a box. Sus, bus, bus. <laughs> this was a success, but I was trying to add like fuck and do it. Quick pack. Oh, don't peck me. Okay, we're out. Is it good? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it looks really good. So we're eating watermelon as dinner is cooking. We are having fried addies tonight, which is fried tortillas with beans and other veggies on them. I miss this dinner. We haven't had this dinner forever. This is not one that Erin normally makes, so this is kind of one that I make in the background. So, quick funny story. So I call them fried addies. I always thought they were called that my entire life. And then when I asked my mom, she was like, no, that was just the pan that we would use was had fried addies on it. So I just assumed that's what they were called my entire life. So I think they're actually called tostadas or I, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but this is Savannah's first time trying them. So hopefully she likes them. Did you eat watermelon? You got it all over your shirt. Was it good? Okay, no, guys. was the watermelon good? Uh, so my first try of um, a fried daddy in a long, long time, which I put a little too much stuff on it. Um, um, uh, Is it good? I miss that taste. Aw. I pushed more. Are you wanting more, huh? You could have more. Fried daddies. It almost just slipped off the plate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you almost made a big old mess. 
so urgent. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> Is that your watermelon dance? <laughs> One thing we like to do when we eat dinner as a family is go over our highs and lows. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically you say one good thing that happened in the day and one bad thing that happened in the day. We mainly always have highs, which is good. So, Hallie, what's your high and low? Oh, I'm going first? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my high, well, this was like during the week, but getting a phone and, um, I don't know what my low is. Mm. I didn't really have a low. That's good. See? Um, What's your high low? Um, my a lot of the kids don't have lows very often. <sighs> hmm. Mine's making the cheer team. Well, oh, Matt. That was a good one. That was um, a good one. My low is not being able to see friends or hang out with friends yet. So they are going to school and they are like around a few people at school, but as far as like hanging out and still like going back into the world, I guess, as you could call it. We're not doing that quite yet. What's your high and low? My high is that I got my, I got a charger for my tablet and I got it working because it wasn't working. Yay! And I have no lows. No lows. Savannah. No, it's Savannah's turn first. High and low of the week. My high is that I got a phone. My low is that my phone won't work. <laughs> okay, so let me clarify on that one. So we got four phones, so we had to switch all the numbers to their SIM cards so they would all work. And Savannah's is the only phone that the SIM card will not activate. So I have a call into T-Mobile to fix it all, but they have not called yet. So as soon as they call, we're gonna get her SIM card fixed and then her phone will work. What's your high and low? Um, it was your turn? Okay, yeah. what's your high and low? Um, I great dinner. Um, my other high is that I'm allowed to play on the Nintendo again. My low is that my tablet's broken. So I can't play Minecraft anymore. All right, Jake, we all know you're low. <laughs> Getting a cut. <laughs> Getting a concussion and yeah, stitches in your lip. My high is that I'm doing football. Oh, after my lip is in. But <laughs> I'm getting like my gear and stuff to like do football. Next week I'm gonna be getting my helmet. Real quick, we are gonna be talking about Alex had some rough things this week, but we're gonna talk about that later on in the video. So stay tuned for his low. But what is your high? Um that also football started. I've been really enjoying that, but I'm very out of shape. So that sucks. Um, my other high is- It's supposed to be a high. Why are you is, saying that sucks? Cause the, <laughs> it makes practice worse cause I'm not in shape. Oh, okay. But my other high is, this is gonna be irrelevant and a lot of you won't know, but I got this camo on one of my weapons in a game I play and I worked really hard to get it. So I feel accomplished. Max and I got a war zone win. And yeah, oh, thank yay. You. Thank you for your support. But my low is I miss my dad. Oh, we do miss dad. Yeah. Wait, I was just about to say. All right, what? Hannah. My boyfriend just texted me. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Ooh. 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 Who is it? She does not have a boyfriend, guys. Relationships are dumb. My high was. I got to text um, me and my friend from the valley are catching up and my other high is that I got a phone and I don't yeah other yeah I don't have a love. My high was everyone getting phones and to see everyone's reaction was just like priceless and my low is that Aaron isn't here and I really miss him. So for those of you who follow our Instagram, you probably saw a post where we talked about that Alex had had kind of a hard week and it's been rough, but I admire your strength and your positivity through it all. There was a lot of heavy stuff that happened this week, so yeah. let me explain as much as I can explain. So I got a phone call and the phone call topic was not even anything to do with Alex. But as I got talking to this person, I realized that they knew a lot about Alex's past. And they were able to answer some of the questions that we've been having for years. 
and tell us a lot that we had no idea about. So we will explain as much detail as we can. Um, there's some privacy things that uh, I can't explain why I got the phone call and things with it. But the good thing that came out of the phone call was that we can get Alex's entire file back to when he first came into care. And our minds were so blown with this phone call. Alex started when they, crying. When they told me about it, ah, it was a roller coaster of emotions, let me tell you. Ugh. And we didn't want to record it because we felt like it was so I felt personal like it was, details. Yeah. And I felt like it was just pure the way it was. Yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about what you learned and like? I feel good. I, I enjoy knowing more about my past because obviously it's what made me who I am now. Um, Which is amazing. Thank you. Oh. Um, but I don't know. It's just interesting because it feels like a whole different person, you know? Like, this is who I was and like this is who I am. The crazy thing is we found out the reason why he first came into care. Yeah. And he was two years old. He was little. I don't remember anything. And so he doesn't remember it. But when I said the reason why he came into care, he just burst into tears. I don't know why. And I don't know if it's something like in his subconscious that like, it like, re I don't know. It was the, cr I, my mind was blown by the whole phone call and like everything and how it turned out. So I admire Alex though. And he turns 18 in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> And as soon as he turns 18, he can request and get that entire file. And if he chooses That's to share true. it with all of you at that point, it's I probably up to will. him. You want to share it? Well, they know so much about me already. Might as well. And you're such an inspiration and in overcoming so much stuff from your past that I feel like that's amazing. Thank you. So he does want to start his own YouTube channel soon. So maybe that could be like your first inspirational quote. Inspirational quote. <laughs> Inspiration of the day by Alex Pettit. But I think overcoming that past is huge. So you are an inspiration to me. Thank you. You're my inspiration. No, you're mine. You see that smile? You're mine. That's what you're makes my day. I'm just you're kidding. Mine? <laughs> mine, mine, mine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So I'm really impressed with how Alex has not fed into like the negativity and like everything that he's been learning about and going through this week. Um, I admire how positive that you've remained and how you've always looked at the positive in every situation, even if there's so much negative in it. I try to, cause I don't like the feeling of being negative. Like yeah, it happens, it's gonna happen here and there. Everyone's gonna have their negative times. But I just don't like that feeling because it just brings back a lot of those bad memories. And it just ruins everyone else's day. So I, I like to go throughout the day, you smile do. on my face. Yeah, but you make everyone It's okay else to happy. feel those feelings and I know. have that. But I do like that you make other people's day better and that you always have a great smile. So the second thing that Alex went through this week um, that I thought was going to break him, but it didn't, so I'm thankful for that, is we found out that he was being catfished. And for those of you who follow like our Instagrams, I mean, as far as mine, like months and months ago, we had talked to the kids that we do not want to vlog or even talk about their relationships. And we've chosen not to go there on any of our platforms. But Alex did on his Instagram. Yes, I, I did choose to share on my Instagram. Which is their personal Instagram, and if he chose to do it, I was totally okay with that. I just didn't want to share it on our bigger platform or on YouTube and, and highlight their relationship because I feel like you just don't know what is or how things are gonna turn out. Mm -hmm. And I had made one comment in our assumption video that I thought he might be getting catfished. And several of you went out and found the truth, which I'm actually thankful for. You guys actually found the real girl that Alex thought he was dating. And she reached out to Alex and we were able to confirm that it was her. And it kind of exposed everything, I guess, from there. It makes me really sad that 
someone would choose to catfish or you know I'm one that has watched the shows I understand it like I'm it not you. you know and I a lot of times I watch the show and I'm like how were they so naive or how you know did they not know they were getting catfished and it was like you know and so I, I kind of had suspected that he was but at the same time I had tried and tried to research and I couldn't figure it out so uh, you guys are amazing, I guess, at research. You guys are secret agents. <laughs> I don't know. But at the same time, it just makes me sad that someone felt that they had to hide behind pictures and hide who they really were and, and lie about it. And it makes me really sad for that person that they felt they had to do that. Because Alex and all of my kids, we always talk about not judging others and accepting people for who they are. And Alex really enjoyed her personality and got along with her really well. And it wasn't about looks, it wasn't about really anything. It was just getting to know her more. So, I don't know, it just makes me sad. The situation makes me sad. How I, do you feel? Um, It hurts, it definitely does, because it's not, fun to be lied to for so long and have this like trust in this image of someone and then have it all flipped over and just everything you thought you knew like you don't and yeah then, and so we don't know this person at all so please do not we do not condone bullying in any way we just want to inspire and show you guys our daily lives and really how much love and happiness that we have in our home and it isn't our intention at all for it to go to a negative place or for there to be drama we're we like to be a drama free home as possible i mean obviously we have teenagers so we have drama but we don't like negativity we don't like negative drama and we feel like a lot of this has turned that way in a lot of ways and so we don't want it to go there we want you guys to know that we have forgiven this person and that we are moving on and and Alex is good. Yeah, I'm good guys. Everything's okay. I'm fine. I'm good. And I forgave her and we're just going to move forward and we've learned our lesson. So. And he's letting me pick out his girlfriend yes. from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Mom I'm a good is always matchmaker, right. actually. She's always right. I am right, 99.9%. Yeah. .9 .9%. yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of you have been asking, like, how did he not see it? And, and I think in a lot of ways he always had it in the back of his mind, but on the forefront it was like, well, I want to be able to trust people. Yeah, I had to trust this person because that's part of a relationship is trust. He has know. a very trusting personality too. It's almost so a fault in yeah, some way. So. It can be faulty. <laughs> But at one point, he had told her, when we were all questioning it, he had told her to send him a pinky promise, like with her face being like, I pinky promise that I'm not catfishing you. And she did. She sent the picture, and so Alex was like, here's proof. Um, she had actually begged the person she took the photos from she actually begged her to send that saying it was for like a fan or something so it makes sense on that aspect and she swore that she could not facetime she didn't have the wi-fi to be able to facetime and on her phone it didn't show that she could facetime so i believed it it seemed real it seemed logical and i kept saying no she could go to a mcdonald's or she could go through instagram and do like an instagram video call and so at the end of the day it is what it is and we're moving on from it and we're good yeah everything's good but i do want to caution everyone be careful and trust your parents <laughs> they know best <laughs> they know you best and when something seems, not all the time, but if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you get that gut feeling, always follow it. Mm -hmm. I'm huge on following my gut. I just want to tell you a quick story. So when I was looking into first doing surrogacy, well not first, this last time that I was doing it, I had mentioned that I had been matched, or I had had a match meeting with a celebrity. And I can say the celebrity was out of Italy. And I had just had this not good feeling from it. And everyone around me was like, 
why do you not have a good feeling and what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know, but I have to follow this gut feeling, but I had no reason to follow it. And even Aaron questioned it. The agency I was with was like, how are we supposed to match you if you're just on feelings? And I'm like, but I have to follow my gut feeling. And come to find out now that things have played out the way that they did, I would have been pregnant and I would have been due right around when COVID hit Italy and they shut everything down. And I would have had their baby and I would have had no, they would have had no way to come here to get their baby and it would have been a huge mess. So I'm so thankful that I followed that gut feeling and that things worked out with my surrogacy the way that they did. So always follow that gut feeling and you never know who's behind a keyboard or words. And so be careful.